Oh, Jamie, so Jamie, have it's you finished? Well. Yes. So you have finished. My turn to speak. Good. So enough of the introduction of your belief and your personal experience and so on, which was not directly relevant to the question about the textual transmission of the teachings of Christ. So as I was saying, I have my reasons why I think Matthew was dishonest, and this is why you interrupt. Where you interrupted? So I'm going to resume from there. Matthew, I started with the first gospel. Matthew was dishonest. He is someone who totally corrupts and changes historical narrations, history. Number two. Number three. He, how? Can how? I? Can I? But you just made an accusation. Are you, are you, Jamie, Jamie. Listen, I understand you're Jamie. probably one of the most knowledgeable, Jamie, experienced. You Jamie. Just, you just made an accusation of Matthew. Jamie. Yeah, you said he's dishonest. How, can you say how is he dishonest? I'm not finished. Are you going to answer? The whole purpose of having that discussion is to tell you why and how he was dishonest. Okay. No, we're first, waiting. First, I haven't even finished my statement yet. I'm still going why my reasons are Matthew's dishonest. And you cut me off because you don't want to hear about it. So let me stop at three. So first, he's dishonest. Why? Okay. Um, he invents prophecies. It's the third one. He makes up things. Such he, as? Oh, please. Do you not listen, have... What, listen, you shouldn't be throwing your, your rattles out of the pram. Jamie, like, like Jamie. Baby. You're an experienced let man. Me, let me no, tell you... You should, behave, you should behave yourself. Jamie, you should behave better. Behave because it's not, like, it's not like I'm giving you a challenge which, which you're not well equipped to deal with. Okay, I'm, I'm just asking you to, to, to explain your statement. How can I? You can. How can I? But, when you but interrupt listen, every listen, but you, you, you make an accusation and then you make accusation one. And what one, do they say? And then you move on to accusation two. What do they say? I'm just asking you. Okay. Accusation one, Matthew's can you dishonest. Not, can you not interrupt yeah, the one how, I'm speaking? How is he dishonest? I am about Let to tell finish, you. Yeah. How is he dishonest? I'm about to tell you. Oh, yeah, how is he dishonest? Them, Are you going to hear? How ready? is he dishonest? Are you ready to hear? How is he dishonest? Okay. So I'm going to tell you why, how he's dishonest. Yeah. Don't interrupt. First, I made three assertions about his dishonesty. I'm going yeah. to give you the reasons of each one, how he's dishonest. Right? Let's start with the first very page of the Gospel of Matthew. Okay? So I'm going to give you reasons where we can identify his dishonesty. Okay? Matthew starts by giving a genealogy, which I'm not interested between the difference between his genealogy or someone other's genealogy. I'm not interested in that. I'm taking the genealogy as he presented, and within this genealogy, he gives people, names of people, supposedly are the ancestors of Jesus Christ, all the way up to David. In this line of people, he brings up names of individuals which are historical people. He didn't just throw them out from in the air, just making them up. Oh, Jewish Ninja Turtles, Superman and Batman. No, none of those things. He is saying Jesus is connected to David through a lineage of historical people and he names them. And when we go through these names, we find his dishonesty. And how do we find his dishonesty? So for example, he says, Josiah, begat Jeconiah and his children. 